Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be answering a viewer question. Um, this one is from George. Uh, first off, he writes, great video, Miles. Definitely a big help. Uh, that's in relation to the Shad Spawn video I just recently did. Go check that one out if you're interested in how to recognize a Shad Spawn and what baits to use. Uh, but his question is, got a line question. I get confused on braid to fluorocarbon leaders on finesse baits like shaky heads, Ned rigs, wacky rigs, and small swim baits. Is it the same size for all? Uh, just wanted to ask. So first off, thank you so much for the question, George. I love doing uh, videos on viewer questions because number one, it helps me come up with content. And number two, uh, you get a specific question answered and that's just a win-win for everybody. So if anybody out there is wanting uh, to ask a question and wanting a, a video done on their question, definitely uh, write in the comments what your question is. And if it's something that I feel confident that I can, I can weigh in on, I will definitely do a video on it. And uh, so again, thank you, George. Um, the next thing I want to say before we get into this video is unfortunately I can't give you specifics on like, you know, I can't say every single time I throw a shaky head on 10 pound test or every single time I throw a drop shot on eight pound test. Um, there are a lot of different factors that go into line choice and, and the decisions on, on what type of line to use. And so that's what we're going to be discussing is what different factors go into my, my uh, decision-making process for line sizes. Uh, the next thing I want to, to uh, share with you guys uh, right off the bat is the type of leader material that I use. I generally am gonna be using a flash green um, uh, Seaguar Smackdown braid mainline, either 15 or 20 pound test. I've, uh, I, I'm kinda going back to 15 pound test nowadays but 20 pound test works really good. And then I use a leader material of Seaguar Gold Label. And the reason why I, I choose Gold Label over all other leader material options, it's a line that is super strong, uh, very abrasion resistance, but it's also very, very small diameter per pound test. So um, I can use 12 pound test Gold Label uh, and it has about the same uh, line diameter as 10 pound test of other uh, fluorocarbons, other competing fluorocarbons. So um, it allows me to downsize the, the actual size of my line while upsizing the strength of the line overall. So that's the reason why I like to use uh, gold label as like my leader material. But now that that plug is out of the way, it's in, I say it's a plug, but really it's, it's legit. Like that's exactly why I use that line. Um, let's talk about, uh, each of those different techniques that you were talking about, George, and, and, uh, and what are the factors that go into it? So the first thing that I think of when I'm, I'm deciding on a, a line to use with each of those techniques, first off, we need to establish that each of those are finesse presentations. So, uh, number one, you want to have a line that, that is, is going to be, can be considered finesse. You don't want to be using a heavy line, uh, with, with a finesse presentation because it restricts the action of the bait. And also it could, um, cause the fish to be able to see the bait or see the line and, uh, and, you know, get turned off from your presentation, uh, because of that. Um, so the first thing that I think about is, is water clarity. How clear is the water? Is the water really super clear? If it is, I'm going to be probably knocking down my, my, uh, pound test rating, uh, a pound test rating or two. So I may go from, uh, you know, wanting to fish 10 pound test to, to even going down as low as, as six pound test. If the water is super clear now, there are some clear water fisheries that don't get a lot of pressure. There's not a lot of, of people fishing out there. Maybe it's a private lake or something like that. In that situation, you don't really need to downsize all that much because the fish are not pressured to begin with. So they're not really line shy. Um, and so you may be able to get away with a higher pound test rating, but uh, there are some lakes, like you go to the majority of the very popular fisheries around the country, they're very, very highly pressured. And so a, if the water's ultra clear, you're gonna have to take special care in using a lighter pound test rating um, and to get that smaller diameter. And that's exactly why I was just talking about the importance of using something like Gold Label, which, which has a very small diameter per pound test. So 
water clarity and the fish's ability to see the line and and the overall uh, pressure that a, a fishery has those kind of go hand in hand for me um, to combat the the uh, topic of line shyness through the visible uh, factor um, the next thing i think about is what type of cover i'm fishing around how much how much uh, abrasive uh, objects are the line is the line going to be uh, coming in contact with um, so for instance, with a shaky head, a shaky head and a Ned rig uh, are presentations where the line tie is where the presentation is making contact with the bottom, okay? So the, the, the line tie is on the jig head, which is making contact with the bottom. That means that you're gonna have more uh, abrasive contact with that line. So you're gonna make contact with the bottom um, uh, more often than you will with a drop shot. A drop shot, you don't need to worry as much about the abrasion factor because the weight, you know, where, where the, the line is, is uh, it, the, the hook is attached to the line is way up off the bottom versus the weight down here. You're not really worried about the, the weight, you know, uh, down here, the line in between the weight and the, and the hook breaking off because you know that's not going to affect you getting that fish in the boat it's just between the the um the hook and your rod tip so uh, with that being the case drop shot i generally will tend to go with lighter line because i can afford to do so i'm not going to have a lot of nicks in between the hook and the rod tip um, versus the hook and the weight and uh, but with a a shaky head, you know, I know I'm probably explaining this poorly right now, uh, rambling on. But the sh a shaky head and a, and a Ned rig are baits that the the line is making direct contact with the uh, with the the whatever type of of bottom surface you have. So if it's shells, you're gonna get a lot of of uh, you know little nicks and cuts in your line. And you're going to have to compensate for that with heavier uh, pound test rating, but you have to like kind of balance it. So like with a, a, a Ned rig, if I'm fishing around really, really uh, sharp objects um, such as uh, zebra mussels or, or stuff like that, I'm going to have to go up to like at the very lightest eight or 10 pound test might have to go to 10 pound test um, with a shaky head. Um, generally, uh, you know, it's a, a little less finessey than a, than a, a Ned rig. I'm generally not going to be going any lower than, than 10 pound test with the, the shaky head. And that's partly because the Ned rig, other than the fact that I want it a little bit more finessey, I'm also hopping it a lot more. I'm not dragging it as much, but a shaky head, despite it being named a shaky head, I don't shake it as much as I do drag it. So I'm making more contact with the bottom with a shaky head because I'm kind of like side dragging with it and the line's constantly dragging on the bottom as well as the jig head. Um, so I, I generally use 10 or 12 pound test with a shaky head just because I'm fishing it in a manner that is causing it to drag more. Now, if, if you didn't have to worry about the abrasion uh, you know, factor, then you could go down as low as six pound test on all these. Uh, and, and be very, very effective with it. But you are having to deal with a lot of uh, abrasion because the line is making contact with the bottom, just the nature of that, that technique. Um, and so I would say that the general range for my, my shaky heads are you know anywhere at the very, very low end. If I'm fishing like sand or something like that, that's not uh, very abrasive. I might go to eight pound test if it's super clear water and I'm really worried about line shyness. Uh, but uh, usually it's, it's, it's 10 to 12 and again, the bottom end eight. But with my Ned rigs, you know, depending on how I'm fishing them, you know, if I'm going up north and I'm fishing like Lake St. Clair where I'm just essentially casting two uh, smallmouth I visually see on my forward facing sonar. I'm not really like hopping it or dragging it on a abrasive surface. It's just, you know, getting to the bottom, I'm hopping it once or twice. Um, that's a situation I could use six pound test or even four pound test just to get those extra bites. Um, but if I'm really working that bait on the bottom over shell or over rock or something like that, I might be uh, sticking with eight to 10 pound test. 
once you get a past 10 pound test, I think it really detracts from the very finessy nature of the Ned rig because it's just hindering the natural action of that bait. So I generally will not go above 10 pound test with a Ned rig under pretty much any circumstances, um, unless I'm bed fishing. And uh, in, in that situation, I might go to 12 or something like that. But um, anyways, so a little bit lighter with the Ned rig, despite the fact that you're still making contact with the bottom with the line. Um, with the drop shots, definitely don't uh, need to worry as much about uh, the abrasion uh, uh, topic. Uh, you know, obviously with, with when you're fishing like uh, rock piles and things like that, you still are making contact with those objects uh, with your line. So like when you're going up north fishing, fishing big boulders and things like that, that have zebra mussels, you're still going to lose a lot of drop shots. So it, it still is a factor, but I generally don't go any higher than than eight pound tests most of the time with my my drop shots. Usually. Uh, six and eight pound tests are pretty standard with drop shots. And if it's really dirty water, you can move up to 10 pound test. And again, because I'm using a gold label, uh, I can I can go up to 10 pound test and I'm still essentially fishing eight pound test as far as the, the line size goes, um, the line diameter. Uh, as far as wacky rigs go, the nature of a wacky rig is, you know, there's there's different ways to fish it. Usually I'm fishing it during the spring around spawning areas. So I'm casting it in and around cover. So in that situation, I need a line that's pretty, pretty strong. You know, I, I need to be able to pull fish away from cover. You know, if I'm skipping underneath docks, skipping around cypress tree knees, um, you know, casting around brush or, or reed lines, anywhere those fish are spawning or, or, you know, just hanging out. Um, I definitely need to have a line that, that allows me to pull those fish away from that cover. So I really like to use 12 pound test uh, whenever possible for that. But there is situations where you need to downsize. And so the really the effective range for a wacky rig is, is eight pound test to 12 pound test. And that really depends on the water clarity and the type of cover that you're fishing. Um, and then finally, the swim baits. Um, the the finesse swim baits it really depends on what you're you're trying to accomplish if you're fishing with your forward facing sonar you're out deep and you're trying to target you know a, a fish that's suspended over 25 feet of water in maybe 10 or 15 feet of water you need a light line to be able to get down to that depth so you know six pound test could be what you you need but you know if i'm fishing out here on lake chickamauga in the fall when i like to throw my little three inch minnows from Z-Man, um, usually I'm not worried about a line size because I'm only fishing two foot of water and uh, and it's more of a reaction bite type deal. So I'm usually f sticking with 12 pound test in that situation. So it really depends. Um, it, with a moving bait, you don't have to worry about the, the line size as far as uh, like being line shy as much, but you do need to worry about it as far as the depth that uh, it'll allow you to fish that bait effectively. Um, the higher the pound test rating, the more drag you're gonna create and the, uh, and the um, shallower it's going to be able to be fished. Um, so if you're trying to fish deep water, use a lighter line. And if you're trying to, and also a longer leader would be really important. But if you're fishing shallow water, all I have to have is, is you know maybe a six foot leader or something like that and heavier line because I'm not trying to get down to the deeper depths. And the reason why I say use a longer leader for deeper water is if you're using braid, braid is 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 um, buoyant. So it's, it's going to wanna pull that bait up to the surface. So like if I'm using a, a finesse swim bait and trying to target fish, you know, and uh, suspended in kind of deeper water, I'm definitely going to want a longer leader to uh, to offset the buoyant factor um, associated with that braided line. Uh, I want more of that, that sinking fluorocarbon uh, leader than I want um, the buoyant uh, braid in the water. So those are essentially the factors that I think of. And really, you know, the, the, the range that I, I mentioned today with all these techniques is generally between six and 12 pound test. That is where all these different finesse presentations lie. But from there, it, you need to think about, is that knot, is that line making contact with the bottom at all times? If it is, 
You need to upsize. You need to start going up that scale. Um, is that is that um, uh, water super clear? Are the fish very, very uh, line shy? Or is there a lot of pressure? That's when you wanna use the lightest line possible. Um, is it a presentation that's in and around cover? Uh, th that's when you might wanna increase if, if you're casting it around the structure or in cover, skipping it under docks and things like that. Uh, and then you also have to think about the depth that the bait is is going to be running, you know, for a more horizontal presentation like a swim bait. Um, the lighter the line, the deeper it's going to be able to, to be effectively fished. The heavier the line, the more it's going to want to come up towards the surface, the more drag it's going to create. So um, I know I essentially took a question that that was hopefully just going to be answered with uh, with a uh, definitive answer on each of those different techniques and turned it into kind of a big decision making process. But really, that's kind of the way it needed to be answered is that there's not uh, one pound test you can you can essentially take what i just said the like the the different size ranges and and just select one in the middle and you'll be somewhat effective and you can fish one pound test for each of these and be fairly effective but if you're looking for every single edge and you're looking to combat you know uh break offs and things like that you do need to adjust based on the conditions that we talked about. So anyways, uh, George, hopefully I answered this in some kind of cohesive uh, a way that you can understand. And, uh, and I really do appreciate the question. So if you guys want more clarity on this topic and, uh, or you have a separate comment, make sure that you drop a comment below and also make sure that you use those affiliate links in the description below for any of the products that I talked about. If you want to buy them, you get 10% off and it helps support the channel. And other than that, make sure you trust the process. And I'm going to see you out on the water. Take care.